having formally proven that t of n as given by this recurrence equation is in big O of n log n. Let's now try to think whether we can also derive a lower bound on t of n. So can we, can we say that t of n is big omega of n log n? Or can we say that it's big omega of n? What should be an accurate lower bound? Of course, we can try to just guess that since we've proven an upper bound of big O of n log n, let's just try and see whether uh, we can prove that n log n is also a lower bound, in which case we would succeed in claiming that t of n is theta of n log n. So we can directly do that. We can directly uh, jump to trying to prove by induction that t of n is greater than or equal to some constant multiple of n log n for large n of n. That is t of n is big omega of n log n. But let's do a little work to justify that n log n does seem to be a good guess even for the lower bound. If we go back to the rough recursion tree that we drew for this recurrence, we already noted that the recursion tree is not going to look like a perfect triangle because the subproblem sizes for the various nodes within the same level are different. So the lengths of the, of the different paths from the root down to the leaves will not be the same. There will be different lengths. But we also noted that the shortest path in this tree will be the path along this left path where we are uh, where every edge is an edge from a node to its left child so if we go on moving left 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 the size of our sub problems is reducing most rapidly whenever we follow a left edge to a child the size of the sub problem is reducing by a factor of 3 so it's becoming one third of the size of the sub problem of the parent and whenever we follow an edge to the right, the size of the subproblem is becoming two thirds of what it was in the parent. So clearly, a left move is reducing the size of the subproblem more. So if we only make left moves, we will hit we will hit the base cases very soon relative to following other paths. Likewise, the longest path we saw was the path where we go on following the right child without ever making a left move. So we saw that the left path is going to be like something like this, the right path is going to be something like this and in general the various, the various paths will be irregular. They will have intermediate lengths between this shortest path and the longest path. So the tree won't be a perfect triangle. It won't be a complete binary tree. It's going to be an irregular tree where nodes will fill up this darkened region, but there'll be no nodes in this empty region. Now, Let's say that we focus only on this triangle. So this is the shortest path along the tree to a leaf. So this is the highest leaf in the tree. By highest I mean it is the leaf with the lowest depth in the tree or the lowest level in the tree. So everything up above this level will be a triangle, a perfect triangle. So the nodes will be completely saturated above this level. There will be exactly two children for all the nodes above this level. And of course, at this level, there won't be subproblems of equal sizes. But, in, but just in terms of filling up the levels, or just in terms of the shape of the tree up to this level, it's going to look like a triangle. 
and then this path will terminate over here while other pa other paths will continue down so we saw that when we computed the level sums for level 0 level 1 level 2 couple of videos ago we were getting constant values of n that is why we came to an upper bound of n log n because we computed the height of this tree the, the length of the longest path which was log of n to the base uh, i think it was to the base 3 by 2 and by assuming that this pattern would continue down the tree it actually won't but because in the very last level we saw that there's a single there would be a single node with a value of t of 1 or whatever constant value um, we would hit for sub problems of small enough size we assumed an upper bound of n multiplied by the height of this whole tree and we said that the actual cost of this irregular region which is the real tree will be less than or equal to that bound of n times log of n to the base 3 by 2 that's how we arrived at this big o of n log n guess we can do something similar here let's try to find out the depth of this node which is the highest leaf in this tree along the shortest path what let's say we determine the height of this or, or the or the depth of, of this level to be I don't know d then we can assume that n times d will probably be a lower bound on the cost of this irregular tree because what we are computing when we when we put down a value like n times d is the sum of the costs across all the levels up to this level d you're not going any further below this level so we are assuming that this pattern of constant level sums will continue up to level D. Will continue at least up to level D. So whatever be the cost of the remaining portion of the tree below this level, it will be at least bounded from below by n times D. That's what we are guessing intuitively. So what will be this depth D? Well, if you focus on the shortest path, the shortest path, which is this path, has values of sub problems going down from n to n by 3 to n by 9 and so on, down to some constant value. Let's just assume 1. It could be 2 or 3, it doesn't matter. The overall uh, asymptotic value of d won't change by that so when we created level 1 we had a sub problem of size t uh, of size n by 3 here when we created level 2 we had a sub problem of size n by 3 square along this leftmost path and so when we created level i we would have had a sub problem of size 3 to the power i and finally we hit a value close to 1 so if d is the depth of the level where we hit the subproblem of size close to 1, then we can say that n divided by 3 to the power d must be approximately 1. This means d must be log of n to the base 3. Now clearly this value log of n to the base 3 is less than the value we got for the height of the tree which was log of n to the base 3 by 2. You need a larger power of 3 by 2 to make it equal to n than the power of 3 that is needed to make the result equal to n. So this value is definitely less than this value which is what we expect because this depth d is less than the height of this tree edge but anyway so having computed that d is log of n to the base 3 if we substitute log of n to the base 3 over here we can estimate that 
the total cost t of n will be at least n times log of n to the base 3. This means that we can make a guess that t of n is big omega of n log n. And we can try to prove this more rigorously. Again using the substitution method or mathematical induction. So we'll prove by mathematical induction. We will prove or try to prove that there exists a constant greater than zero and a threshold n naught greater than zero such that t of n is bounded from below by a constant multiple of n log n for all values of n larger than the threshold. And we will again prove this by induction on n. So let's use the substitution method again to try to prove this guess. We'll do that in the next video.